Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. She's the first black woman to make a U.S. Olympic swim team and medal. And with her pro swimming days now behind her, she's pushing kids into the pool through the USA Swimming Foundation's Make a Splash initiative and much more. Please welcome my swim sister, Maritza McClendon. How are you? I'm Thank so you very so much for having me. Oh, I'm so very happy to have you here. You said, have another black swimmer be next to me and yes. one that has won medals <laughs> in the Olympics. Let's talk about how you first even got introduced to swimming. Well, I actually grew up in San Juan, Puerto Rico, which is where I was born. And we're surrounded by water. Absolutely love the beach. My mom took me every day, but I would only go knee high. Right. And every now and then when my mom, my mom wasn't looking, I'd kind of creep in a little bit more. And then my mom was like, mm-mm, <laughs> we're not playing this game right yeah, now. So, yeah. you know, at the same time, too, I was suffering from scoliosis. Okay. And my doctor actually recommended swimming. And my mom was like, perfect. Yeah. You take her to the beach all the time. Let's get her some basic water safety lessons. Right. By the end of the summer, I loved swimming yes. so much. I said, mom, I want to do this all the time. When does she know that you had a gift to actually propel yourself to the Olympics? You know, I think my mom always believed from day one that I was going to be a great mm -hmm. athlete, great swimmer. Um, for me, it clicked in a little bit later. You know, I was, I grew up in Florida and didn't want to swim outdoors in the cold. In the winter, <laughs> our 60 degree weather, yes, winter is right. freezing for me when you're wet. Um, and then, you know, at age 12, I made this national team cut and yeah. that was when it clicked to me and I was like, hmm, yeah, I should probably commit a little bit more to this sport. Yeah. So. You know, around the age of 12 is when you can say either you're going to do it. Yes. Or you're just going to do it a little bit. And I, I was one of the just to do it a little bit, but it got me through college. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> which, is, which is a good thing. You know, I want to just talk about the correlation between uh, how you learned how to navigate through life by swimming. I know for me, touching the wall, for mm -hmm. me now in my life, I got to finish through and I got to finish strong. How has the pool helped you in life? You know, I think as a swimmer, you just have to be so dedicated to what you're doing to excel to the next level. Right. And I was very committed. I was very competitive. And I think that it's really all the life lessons that I earned, learned during swimming has transitioned to my everyday life now. Absolutely. I am very still competitive in the workforce. Yes, I mean, I you give me a project, I'm going to beat that deadline. I'm going to make it the best project it's ever been. Yes. And, and you know, and I, and I think that it's just constantly living with me. Even in my marriage, my husband and I are so competitive, it, it, it doesn't ever stop. So right. even now we have two little kids that we're bringing up to be just as competitive as yeah. us. So watch out, world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I would love for you to hold your medals up and yes. talk about what you won when you were there. Yes, oh, at yes. The Olympics. Look at that. So these are, this is actually my Olympic silver medal right yes. here that I cherish so much. It's my pride and joy. Mm -hmm. When I made the Olympic team, I became the first African-American female to make a U.S. Olympic swim team. Yes. And this is that, that medal of honor. It's mm -hmm. one of those things where I'm so proud of myself for becoming an Olympian and making a medal, but I'm also proud to be the first and I definitely don't want to be the last. Absolutely. I love swimming as a sport, but for so many, it's a life-saving skill and that's it my is. platform now. Let's talk about those life-saving skills with the Make a Splash initiative. Why? Why was it so important for you to uh, team up with USA Swimming? You know, USA Swimming Foundation has done a fantastic job of creating an avenue where every kid can learn how to swim. Yes. You know, we're, we're listening to statistics that 64% of African-American children don't know how to swim, 45% of Hispanic children don't know how to swim, and 42% of, of Caucasians don't know how to swim. When you hear those statistics you have to do something. Yes. It's about educating and offering those opportunities. So you can always go to usaswimmingfoundation.org and type in your zip code, find a pool near you. You can get it at low to no cost. Yes. And everybody has an opportunity to learn how to swim. It's so important. Those statistics, because of the USA Swimming Foundation program, is, decrease, is decreasing by 5 to 10 percent um, over the last decade. So Good. we're definitely seeing those numbers switch. And you know, it's fantastic. This 2018 year, um, USA Swimming Foundation really wants to teach at least a million kids how to swim. That is so good. Can we talk a little bit about the black girls in their hair? Yeah. Because this is really big deal. <laughs> me swimming, I, got I, I don't know, we've shown some pictures of me in my hat. I would literally mm -hmm. put on a hat every mm -hmm. time I got out of swim practice. But mm -hmm. can we just talk, to, speak to that really quickly and the importance of us getting out of that whole mindset? You know, for especially for black women, our hair is a big thing. It's it's kind of our pride and joy. It's who we are. It helps us express ourselves. And it's always tough hopping into a pool 
and getting it wet. I know. And it gets so, uh, right. and you hop out. Right. And you it doesn't just turn back into normal. You got to hide it or go back to the bathroom and fix it up. So that always is a, a slight barrier, but we want to make sure that you can take your hair, care of your hair when you're dry. Yes. You can do it when it's wet too. Yes. Yes. It's all about maintenance and getting the right products for your hair. And right. everybody's hair is different. We know black women's hair is very different. Yes from person to person. Yes. So there's products out there that, that work for everyone. Before we let you go, you are a member of Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority yep. Incorporated. <laughs> and I love I love programs in all of our sororities. Mm -hmm. I'm really, really drawn to SWIM 1922. Can you talk a little bit more about that? So SWIM 1922 is a partnership with USA Swimming where we're really trying to make sure our African American women are understanding what these statistics are, we're educating them about them, and making sure that they have an avenue of how to change those statistics. Yes. We want them to bring their kids, their grandmas, their aunts, everybody come to the pool, learn how to swim. And our biggest target is, is African American women, because we want to make sure that they're the head of the household, and they're the ones that are gonna be most um, getting them most Per, the most impact of getting yeah. their children to the pool. Good, good. I'm so glad that you were here to share the information, for, to share the space with you. Thank you so much. And for all the black girls out there and girls in general who you think you can't swim, look at this woman and a little piece of me, too, <laughs> in college. All right? You can do it. Thank you, Marissa. Thank you so much for all that you're doing. All right, you can learn more about Make a Splash Initiative and Swim 1922 when you go online and visit USASwimmingFoundation.org. Next up, we'll read some of your tweets and what the people say. The amazing Marissa McClendon.